Welcome back to Math 124, Introduction to Statistics. Today we're going to be talking about the distribution of the sample mean. And this is one of the more fun uh, sections that we do in our class. Actually, I think the distribution of the means of all the samples would be a better title for this section. Because if we have a population, okay, here's the boundary of my population, and within that population, we have various individuals. Furthermore, let's say I ask five of you to choose, each of you, a sample of five of these circles, calculate the area of each of those circles, and find the mean of the areas of the circles in your sample of five. So the first person might choose these five randomly. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? And the mean of the areas of their samples might be in there. In fact, let's characterize that with a dot. All right? The next person sampling might wind up with this sample. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? And if you look at the size of those, theirs might be smaller, a smaller area. And another person might choose these five. And maybe theirs is maybe in this area. And finally, it might happen that the fifth person choosing, a, or the fourth person choosing a sample of five would happen to choose those five and would have quite a low mean. And then if I ask the rest of you to do it, just like the others have done, you might choose another five that would have that mean. And another person might, oh, wind up with actually the same mean as the person who was represented by blue. And we might have others falling through here with different sample means. And what would this look like if we did that? Well, I don't have to sit here and do it myself. I don't have to find all of the possible uh, samples within this population and find the means of all of them because there's a very handy website that will show you this technique with a much larger population. And it's really quite fun to play with. Let me pull up a browser. Let's get these out of the way. Here's my browser. And I'm going to look for a sampling distribution demonstration. OK, because that's another way to say the distribution of the sampling mean. And I want this very first one, Sampling Distribution's online stat book. It's going to take me to this page. And if you look at the uh, upper left here, you'll see a Begin button. Please push that. And it will take you to this page. Because I do want you to go to this page and play with it. It's quite fun. And it will help you to actually uh, believe what I'm telling you about sampling distributions, or the distributions of the sample mean. Here we have a very nice um, distribution. This is the parent population from which we're going to be taking samples. And as you can see, it's normally distributed. Okay, if you look over on the left, you will see the mean is 16. The median is 16. Good, as we would expect, the perfectly normal uh, distribution. The standard deviation is 5. And if you look at the bottom line here, the bottom of the distribution, it goes from 0 to 32 on the graph here. And 16 is the mean. And the standard deviation is indicated by this red bracket. OK. Now below this, we have some choices. We have animated 5, 10,000, and 100,000. And these are actually indicate 
at least the five, the 10,000, the 100,000, indicate how many times we're going to run this simulation. And if we click animated, it will animate this one sample at a time. All right, so right now, the line here is set for the mean with a sample number of five, just as in the circles demonstration that I just did. So let's animate this and see what happens. It's going to take a sample of five. Get the right pointer here. And it took the mean of that and dropped that mean down here to the next row. So let's animate that again. Take another five. And record the mean. Sample an another sample of five and record the mean. Another one. And so you see how the samp the means of each sample, or the mean of each sample falls in a different place. Some of them are exactly the same place. Like that one. Okay, but let's speed this up a little bit. Let's do five at a time. Let's do another five. And another five. And another five. So let's speed it up a little more. Let's do 10,000. Hmm. At first it was kind of spotty, right? But when we got up to a large sample, or a large number of repetitions, rather, each sample was only a five, we got a bell-shaped curve, a bell-shaped distribution. And notice here we can see the mean is 15.98, so it's almost what it was in the parent population. The median is 16, and the standard deviation is 2.30. Hmm. Standard deviation is quite a bit smaller. And that's for a normal distribution. What would happen if our distribution were not normal? What if instead it were skewed? And this is what makes this fun. You can actually change the shape of the distribution with your mouse or your uh, finger if you're on a tablet. So let's clear the lower one. And let's do an animation of a sample of five. Let's do it again. Choose another five. And another five. That one was kind of low. Another five. All right, let's do five repetitions of the sample of five. And another five repetitions. And another five. And 10,000 repetitions. And 100,000 repetitions. And look at what's happening. It is also approaching normality with multiple repetitions. Okay, so let's see what happens if we do something really weird with this. Oh, I keep messing it up. Okay, what about that? That doesn't look anywhere close to normal. It looks bimodal. But let's see what happens if we take samples of five. And let's do it five times. Another five times, another five times, 10,000 times, and it is approaching normality. Right? But what about that lower level? Well, it's not doing anything right now because this says none. I haven't told it what I want it to do. So what I want it to do is also consider the mean. But I don't want to set it for a sample of 5. I'm going to set it as high as this will go. I don't know why it doesn't go to 30. But it goes to 25. And let's see what happens if we do that. So we're going to animate it first. 
it's going to take the sample of 5 and then a sample of 25. And that mean will be dropped to the lowest level. It takes a while to do 25. And there's the mean of the first sample of 25. Let's do it again. Okay, a sample of 5 is taken and the mean is recorded. A sample of 25 then is taken and the mean is recorded on the lower level. Boom. Okay, let's do that five times. Another five times. Another five times. Another five times. Watch, look at the difference between a sample of five and a sample of 25. Another five times. And another five times. The sample of 25 is approaching the shape of a normal distribution much more quickly than the sample of five. Okay, and notice as these are going, if you look at it, if you stop the video and look at it, the uh, scales on the left-hand side are changing slightly too. If we do it at 10,000, well, they're, they're, they've both, both approached a normal distribution, but look at the difference between them. Okay, the mean of each is 9.86 for a sample of 5 and 9.77 for repeated samples of 25. The median is the same for each, but the standard deviation for samples of 5 is 3.61. The standard deviation for the larger samples is 1.61. So those are both important things to note about the difference between the parent population, repeated samples of small size, and repeated samples of large size. All right. No matter what your sample size, the more samples you take, the closer the distribution of the sample mean will be to a normal distribution. But the larger your sample size, it will approach normality more quickly, and the standard deviation will be smaller. So go ahead, go ahead and have fun with that. It's time now to close this browser and for me to give you a formal dis definition of the distribution of the sample mean. The sampling distribution of the sample mean, x bar, is the probability distribution of all the possible values of the random variable x bar computed from a sample of size and from a population with mean mu and a standard deviation sigma. Here's the idea behind that formal definition. Number one, obtain, a, or step one, obtain a simple random sample of size n. Step two, compute the sample mean. Repeat until you find all distinct random samples of size n. By distinct, that means if a, you choose a sample and then later you take another sample and find out you have chosen the same individuals, you throw away that second instance. Every sample must be unique. All right, so that's all I want to do in this video. There will be another in this series. Please go back and either rewatch this video or even better, go visit online stat book yourself. Look at how I found it in the browser and play with it yourself until you convince yourself of what happens when you obtain a simple random sample of size n, you compute the sample mean, you do this again and again and again. What happens? to the shape of the distribution of your sample mean, what happens when you vary the size of the sample, what happens to the mean of the distribution of the sample mean, what happens to the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample mean. Play with it until you understand the concepts and are ready to move on to applying those concepts.